Hi, I'm the woodpecker today as a Christmas gift for Renee. I'm making this wall clock case to replace the one she has in the room that she uses as her office. I hope she'll like it. Since we changed the TV at the cottage for a bigger one, we had to remove the clock that hung over our small TV. So Renée brought it home and hung it on the wall in the room she uses as her office. But when she said that she didn't like the case of the clock, I knew right away what to give her for Christmas. I'll keep the clock for the mechanism and build a new case just like this one. The clock will be made of black walnut, so I need to prepare some. The first thing I do is the door's round shape. So after cutting a piece of walnut to the right size, I cut the shape with the CNC. But after that, I still have some work to do. I need to break the pieces free and clean the tabs. Huh. But here I make a huge mistake. I put some tabs on the ends, flat spots, and by using the sanders I change the angle. <laughs> but I'm not still aware of that yet, so I keep on working. The bottom arch has to be thinner than the top one. To do so, I pass it into the drum sander. In fact, it has to be thinner by the same amount of the thickness of the glass I'm going to use. Uh, I still need more wood for the sides. And the door. And it's only here that I notice that I screwed up while sanding. I need to cut another set of arch. But this time around, I make sure there are no tabs on the straight sides. And I go back to the CNC. Now it's perfect. I can cut the bottom rail. I don't want to cut it too short. It's the reason why it's a bit long. And now I'm creeping on the right length. And with a perfect circle in between, I can place all the rails in place. Mark where I need to drill some mortises and cut them. After a quick dry fit, I can clearly see this will be perfect. So I remove the center rail and cut a rabbit for the glass. Now I can check if my center rail is at the right thickness. Uh, it's not. I need to remove a little bit of wood again. Haha, <laughs> perfect. Now I can cut the bottom corners. After checking that this will be okay, I can glue the door. And not too difficult. A bit of glue where it's needed and two clamps. I just need to leave that alone to dry. Now it's time for the top of the arch. First thing to do is to tilt the miter saw at 11.9 degrees and do the first cut. Turn the piece around and cut it again. I do that five times. Then I mark where the mortises will be and drill them. This is what the top should look like. But I need to cut both top corners. The ideal tool would be the table saw with a dado blade tilted at the right angle. 
uh, but I can figure out a safe way to hold the pieces. Since I want to keep my fingers, I use the Bensa. Okay, it's not as accurate, but way safer. Nah, but I have some touch-ups to do. I do all the same things for the other side. After another dry fit, I'm convinced this will work. I take it apart and sand all the marks I made. But I still need to make some mortises for the bottom of the case. Now I'm ready to glue the box. When everything is in place, I add clamps and check if it's square. Uh, to adjust this, I tighten or loosen both vertical clamps. Now I can remove the excess glue from the door. I need a piece of glass in the front. Mm, but I'm not sure if the glazier will need a real-life pattern to cut the glass. I don't take a chance and make one anyway. I'll bring the door and the pattern to the glazier, just in case. <laughs> but in the end, he only needed the door. It's far from being done. I need to send the arch top. I begin by the outside with a soft interface pad on my sander. Mm. But I notice quite soon that this doesn't work on the inside. I need to use another sander. But when it's round, it works with the small sander. All the pieces have to be at the exact same height. I begin by removing the bulk with my jack plane. The rest is done on the workbench and some big sheet of sandpaper. Uh, I wish I could use my drum sander, but it's not big enough. It's longer this way, but I manage anyway. I also need to take care of the bottom. Now it's time to cut some dados for the hinges. I begin by putting them in place and trace around them. But since I want to cut this on the table saw, I need a visual reference on the side. So I stick a piece of blue tape and cut it to the exact same width as the hinges. To avoid blowout, I stick some scrap piece after the cut. Then I just need to cut this. Uh, I should have done this with the router. The surface is really not pretty. But it's time for the top arch. I begin by surfacing a thicker piece of walnut. I'm going to cut the shape with the CNC again. This will be more precise and easier. So in Aspire, I enter the size of the front molding. Next, I import the SketchUp vector I made for the top arch. Center the vector and I'm ready for the cut. Eh, this is quite easy. I just need to enter the depth of my piece of wood, check if it's the right router bit and add two tabs. This time around, I make sure they're at a place that won't bother me. And here's the result. I just need to cut this. I can't ask for a better fit between the door and the top arch molding. It's now time to cut the OG profile. It doesn't go as well as I would have liked. I made this. It's unacceptable on a visible part. I'm going to cut another piece. Uh, but I'm not too worried, because I'll use this piece later on. You'll see. <laughs> when the good OG is done, I put the fans and cut some straight OGs for the sides. Mm, 
This will work a bit like this, but I need to cut it at 45 degrees. I begin by the two straight sides. I can use those pieces to mark and cut for the front arch piece. I will glue the top and arch to the side in two passes. I spread glue on the joint and clamp this on a piece of melamine with three clamps. This way, the glue won't stick to anything else than the joint. While this dries, I gather more walnut for the bottom decorative stack of moldings. Surfacing all this takes so much time that I'm now able to glue the other side of the top arch molding. Now I need to route all the shapes I want for all the pieces of all the bottom moldings. I also rip them to it. The bottom molding needs a groove, so I'll be able to close it with a very small panel. Now this will be clearer later on. If you look at the top molding, you can see that on the side I have a reveal of about a quarter of an inch, <laughs> but not on the front. I need to push the molding forward, but doing that leaves me with a gap here. And yes, this was planned in advance. I measure the gap and send the piece that I mangle a bit while doing the OG. When it's at the right thickness, I can cut it to size. And now it's perfect. I just need to glue this together and wait for the glue to dry. Uh, but I'm not done. I also have those two holes between the molding and the arch top to fill. Mm, not too difficult either. I cut a piece of scrap to the same angle as the top and I'm good. I just need to glue this in place. But I'm super careful not to glue the molding to those pieces. But I still need to leave the molding in place while the glue dries. So both pieces will be at their exact position. And while the glue dries, I can start to work on the bottom moldings. I begin by all the 45 degree cuts. Then I can use the box itself to figure out what I need to cut. Next, this needs mortises. When it's done, I assemble it and figure out the length of the back. And make more mortises. Inside the bottom decorative molding, I have a thin piece of walnut. I need to send this to this thickness. I don't really need such a big piece. I only finish one corner. After all this, my last glue up is dry. I need to remove the excess glue. With this piece done, I can figure out the length of all the pieces of the middle molding. Then I can cut, assemble, glue, and when the glue is dry, remove the excess glue. And now I can take care of the bottom layer. But since it's so thin and I need to place a thin panel inside, I'm going to glue this in two passes. First step is to glue both alves together. While the glue dries, I can cut the back rabbit of the case. Now that the glue is dry, I can measure for the small panel and cut it. <laughs> I told you, it was super small, eh? Now this can all go together. And this time around, I can use a couple of clamps. Now I can return to work on the back of the case. 
Ah, it's not done. Because I didn't square off the corners. And once again, to have the right shape, I cut the back with the CNC. The only thing I have to do is to remove the small tabs. And it's perfect. Even too perfect. This would be perfect for a plywood back, but since this is solid wood, it's way too tight. Uh, it's way better like this. Okay, I'm going to stop part one here. And if you want to see the rest of René's walnut clock, you'll have to come back to the woodpecker.